didn't have to die that day. If things were done properly, he would still be here with us. There was a complete breakdown in the care of people in training. If they don't start learning, there's going to be other deaths. And I don't want other parents to go through this. I would rather have my son not being classed as a preventable death. When the same accident happens again and again and again. That just has to stop. It cannot continue to happen like that. He loved being in the army and he wanted to join the Reserve SAS. It's not what we wanted to hear. But he was passionate and he said he wanted to be the best soldier that he could be, and they were the best of the best. We were worried about what he could be asked to do if he was deployed, but the thought of training didn't occur to us at all. Two military personnel have died during a training exercise in the Brecon Beacons National Park in Wales. A third Army Reserve soldier has died of his injuries. It's understood that the soldiers were taking part in a selection process for the territorial SAS on Saturday, the hottest day of the year so far. Margaret and Kelvin's 24-year-old son, Craig, was one of the three men who died after collapsing in the heat that day. At 11.30, there was a knock on the door. And as soon as he said MOD, I knew Craig was dead. He came in and uh, explained how Craig was going up a hill and he'd had a heart attack. We got the gist that there was more than Craig. So we sort of is, is there more than Craig? And they said yes. Edward Mayer and James Dunsby also died. James prided himself on being a professional. He was a very clever young man very well educated and he if he'd have been alive today and this had happened on his watch he could never have understood it either three lots of parents lost lost their children and uh, they'll never come back again they're prepared to put their lives on the line the MOD let them down that's as simple as that so how quickly can heat become a danger if you're pushing yourself to the limit Scientists at Loughborough University are putting it to the test. At the moment, we've set up a neutral temperature and we're using 15 degrees, 50% relative humidity. And we don't have any sunshine in there and a very low wind speed. Uh, he's carrying 20 kilograms on his back. Alex is fitter than most, but what happens when some subtle changes are made? We haven't made it that hot, just 22 degrees Celsius, but we add the sunshine and a bit more humidity. So even in a cool environment, he would get warm. So we already saw that he got up to 38 degrees in a cool environment, but now he will struggle a bit more to release that heat, so the heat builds up more inside his body. If it gets very hot, as long as you slow down a lot, you can cope with a, lot, a big range of temperatures, but of course they couldn't because they were doing a selection exercise. So they had to keep pushing themselves. And that's the big thing. If, as soon as you take away the ability for a person to self-regulate in terms of workload and work speed, that means you put them at a risk and you have to monitor the environment to ensure they don't go uh, in, into these problem areas. Alex has been walking on an incline for an hour. I'm sweating way more. Um, it's just a lot more difficult. How much longer do you think you could have gone on without the need to slow down or stop? I'd, I'd say about half an hour, 45 minutes. Over the years, we've seen many accidents, many people uh, suffering from heat illness. They feel that you can't include these considerations of heat and cold as well in the, in the winter uh, because they just have to be tough and just do the job they are supposed to do.
Every serviceman has got limits. We need to train them to those limits, but they'll push themselves to the point, as we saw in Brecon, they're the last people to recognise the signs of failure of their body, of um, dehydration, um, of them pushing themselves to a point where they're going to become casualties. So that reinforces yet again the importance of supervision. It is shameful. An inquest in 2015 found the MOD had made mistakes with its planning and equipment, and that neglect had contributed to the three men's deaths. We will study the coroner's conclusion very carefully and make sure that everything possible is done to prevent a reoccurrence of an incident such as this. Welcome to Wales Today. Tonight's headlines. Corporal Joshua Hall died after completing an eight-mile fitness test in Brecon. Questions have been asked about whether the army has learned from the deaths of three soldiers on the beacons in 2013. It is my belief that the Ministry of Defence failed in its duty of care to implement any meaningful changes. Having served 24 years in the armed forces, this whole process has given me no pleasure. I'm ra I would rather have my son not being classed as a preventable death. The coroner at Josh Hall's inquest said she had grave concerns about what happened. The MOD apologised again. The MOD has acknowledged that aspects of the policy in place could have been better. We shall act upon the recommendations which have come from this inquest. These weren't the only deaths in training where lessons could have been learned. An MOD report commissioned in 2002 after a series of diving deaths called for substantial changes to equipment and training. But less than two years later, Sergeant Bill McClellan died in just a few metres of water during an exercise in Germany. He was wearing the same kit that the army was warned it should have replaced, and the training at the time was still lacking. It has immunity for prosecution under the Health and Safety Act. Yes, they can be criticised, but there's no, nothing with sanctions or teeth to it that can actually make them sit up and think, well, actually, we do have to change. We have to change our systems and procedures, and we have to look after those people that, that serve with us. We've discovered that MOD has breached health and safety laws 40 times in the last 20 years. In that time, 148 servicemen and women have died, not in battle, but in training. Unfortunately, in my 30 years' experience, the only way the MOD are going to learn a lesson is to have their immunity removed and sanctions imposed. The MOD says when the health and safety executive identifies shortcomings, it takes action. Is it enough? You can't play with people's lives. Every trainer must regard the people they are training as their own family, their responsibility. How would they look after their brother or their sister? That might sound quite you know, emotional and uh, you know, whatever, but it, it, it's not. Training is an emotional business. Training is about people. When a child dies, it's bad enough, but when you find out that you have to go through all that pain, when it was totally avoidable, it just makes it so much worse. Because he didn't have to die that day. If things were done properly, he would still be here with us. I'll never get over it. I, I can't. It's, it's impossible. But I'll miss him as long as I've, I've got a breath left in my body. Um, and you, no, you do not get over it. You do not get over it. 